Hey everybody, Lucky Jack Racing. Ow. And I'm back with probably our most well-known project car, the Biscayne. Now, if you all remember, this is a 1966 Chevrolet Biscayne converted from a four-door to a two-door by a DD Speed Shop up in Canada. And this is a pretty cool car. It uh, started out as a 350 whenever I got it. It had a 454 in it, and I really like the idea of having a big block in it. So I put one back in there. But uh, as you know in some of the old videos that um, it had some fueling issues. And by some, I mean literally all of it is fueling issues. So I bought a brand new gas tank, a fuel line, and some more, you know, fuel filters because you can never have too many fuel filters. And we'll be able to put that on there, get this car rolling down the road. Let's get started. Okay, so that's my brand new Jegs gas tank I bought. It was like 140 bucks on Jegs. I mean, I was super excited that I got it for a good deal. Just kind of have the car backed up on the concrete because I have the 64 C10 in the way of using the lift. So it's just on the concrete and I was like checking it out because it's what I do. But uh, that gas tank, easily accessible without having to fool around with, you know, putting it up on lift or anything. I may not replace the fuel line this time which I feel kind of bad since I have one, but there is no way I can crawl up under that thing and get the fuel line out. So I may just have to do without the fuel line for right now. But as long as I have the gas tank, I think that that is going to solve our main issue. And then I'm going to replace part of the rubber lines in the front. I'm going to loosen these two rear straps real quick. And I just kind of have a, or yeah. I just kind of have a jack holding it right here because I don't really want this to like fall out real quick on me because that would be not good. I don't really know how much this jack's going to help. Oh, and by the way, this gas tank does have uh, gas in it. It's got about a quarter of a tank in it, so it's a little heavy right now. This car's underside is like really clean, I gotta say. I mean, to be, to have sit it outside in, you know, snow, and then to have sat outside right now during the, uh, some of the tropical storms we've been having here in North Carolina, I'm pretty impressed with it. I noticed that all my stuff on the front was corroded, and, uh, I had to take apart part of the ignition to get it to start earlier, and then charge the battery, but that's pretty normal, because this battery dies all the time. The only reason I'm really like doing this is because I really want to drive it to school one day just because it's fun and it makes people question like what is that and uh, my school did a whole article on me in the yearbook so I got like a whole little section about this me and this car and the YouTube channel and racing and all that which was you know it was really nice and uh, they did a really good job with it really cool first one's out well this one's rusted on there Okay, I'm going to take a minute, try to get this one off. I don't want you to see me struggle, so I'll be back in a minute. So I got the gas tank slightly down, and I can already smell the gas. Yeah, by listening it, whenever I shake it, it sounds like sand is in there. So I think I figured out my fuel leak. Oh, I think that's leaking fuel somewhere. I can smell it bad. Or I can just smell the fumes. Whew. I did a number on that. Oh, that is disgusting. It's got a bunch of rocks in it from the factory. I actually just thought it was rat poop, but it's not rat poop. So we're good. Uh, yeah. Okay. So it came out without a hitch. Now I gotta unhook this fuel line up here. Clamp it off and unhook it real quick and then unhook the uh, sending unit 
which actually still works. So I'm pretty happy about that and hoping I don't damage it. So let me grab some vice grips real quick. I just clamped off right there. Then I'm just going to remove these. I can. Prepare to spew gas all over the floor. Or not. Huh. I'm going to say that this is the original fuel line from 1966. Which is pretty impressive. It's still working. I'm going to have to get a screwdriver and separate that one. Probably the same with this one over here. Okay, screwdriver time. One line off. Actually, pretty surprised no fuel came out. Like I said, I have a new fuel line for it, but I don't think I can get in there and remove it very easily. So, for the time being, I think I can get it to flow enough through this new system without clogging it up. had fuel in it crap it burns well that's most of our fueling issue right there because that gas that just got on the floor is less gas and more dirt Fueling issue solved. It turns out there's just a bunch of crap in the gas tank like we thought. So I'm going to clean that up and pull this gas tank out real quick. Pulling it out. And now it is free. I wish you could hear how much sand it sounds like is in this thing. It is actually scary. Well, time to get the new one prepped. So as far as I can tell, it looks like the sending unit is intact and it looks to be in good condition, which is nice for me. But holy crap, this gas stinks. It smells like pickled beets mixed with B.O. It is terrible. So terrible, but I think it'll be all right. So really the only thing I have to do before I can switch the tanks over is take out the sending unit because I didn't buy a new one because I knew it's been worked on at some point because it still works. So I, all I got is here is a little brass push rod off of a C10. 
and I'm just going to kind of knock it out because you're not supposed to use metal ones because brass can't make sparks but metal can especially if it's on a gas tank like this so just remember use gas use brass things Man, that's disgusting. Look at that. Look at all that grime on there. I wish I had a new sock filter for this thing, but I don't. But that's okay, because then I can clean it up just a little bit, and this should be good as new. So give me a second to clean it. So I just put the sending unit back in. I'm so sorry, the camera was not recording. So I just put the sending unit back in. I'm going to replace the two rubber hoses, and then put that try to button this all up tonight so I don't have a car halfway sitting in the garage with the door open because that's just not cool. So I decided against reusing the gas in the tank judging by the smell of uh, lacquer thinner basically I and uh, the smell of uh, pickled beets that's coming from it also um, tells me that I should not reuse this gas. I'll just go get some new ones later. I got some gas sitting around so I can pour it in there and maybe we can lift it to the gas station and fill it up there. Fingers crossed. But um, I'm just going to tape over the hole and then uh, I'm not really sure. Figure out somewhere to throw away the gas tank. I'd really like to drain it into a bucket or something, but I don't have a bucket to drain it into. There's nowhere safe to drain the gas tank. So just tape it up and uh, throw it away somewhere. Now I gotta find the tape. Where do you put it? So maybe we won't have such a giant mess. Tape. Cause that's the only tape I have. Do we not have duct tape? I think we used it all. Or else I would have already used it. Do you see in it? It's neon green. Duct tape. I wonder how we we're gonna get rid of this. <laughs> Throw it in the trunk, no more issues. No, I don't think so either. Let me go look for your tape. Okay, so gas tank is ready. I got the other one sitting outside and then I'll take care of it later off camera so no one knows about it. Appropriately, of course. I'm, I'm sitting with a friend of mine who works at a shop and he's going to dispose of it. Okay, uh, he's this, for real going to dispose yeah, of it properly. Real, dispose <laughs> of it properly. It's not like I'm going to set it on fire, but it's <laughs> 
what? How do you think everyone at the drag strip gets rid of old gas <laughs> and engine oil? They just put it on fire and just let it burn. First things first, I need to find both of the bolts or the nuts. I lost the nuts earlier. Okay, here's one. I think the other one's over there somewhere. Okay, so I gotta go up front. Give me a little bit of here, excuse me. Okay, now I gotta get on your side. I'm sorry. I'm just in the way. No, you're fine. Gotta put the straps back on and oh, give me a second. I forgot to do that. It only works. Tuck this back behind the plate. Sorry, this is kind of boring. It's just an awkward angle. Yeah, it is. Okay, that's one strap. It's not completely tightened, but it's on there. Strap number two. After a few too many off-camera struggles, I finally got the straps back on. Gas tank fitted up in there, and now I'm gonna put this bad boy back on, and somehow this is not gonna be the right size socket, even though it's the one I used earlier. How does that happen? It sounds like the struggle bus is here. The struggle bus never left.
Okay, it's not going anywhere. That's good. Well, there we go. Gas tank's back in it. And everything works, hopefully. Yay! Yay, I'm gonna push it outside, put the cover on it, and deal with it tomorrow morning. So, the old Biscayne sits here under the tarp in front of the shop. And um, she did get a gas tank in her, and I proceeded to replace some of the fuel lines on the front and did a new set of um, fuel filters for it so that it was all flowing good. And yes, I did take it down the road. It did pretty well. I mean, I gotta say, for um, something that we just kind of threw together. So it does do pretty well now. Yes, it does get down the road successfully. We're gonna do some more with that coming up, you know, showing you that. And uh, I'm really glad that it's finally back on the road, finally back in one piece with no crap in the tank. You you should have seen that tank. I do not have any footage because I already threw the tank away, but the gas in it was literally black with soot. If you shook it hard enough, it sounded like sand in a bucket. It was so bad. But this car, you know, I've got it all fixed now. The gas gauge works again. It's got a full tank of gas in it and uh, you know, just a pretty decent cruiser. It needs a little bit of tuning still done to it, you know, on the carb and every, um, some timing timing's a big issue right now but uh you know what it'll all be good so uh thank you very much for watching me replace a gas tank in the 1966 biscayne old bisquick as we call it uh i hope that you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe share it with your friends and uh keep watching the best dead gum teen automotive content on youtube lucky jack racing see you guys later